Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection Podcast. Today is a solo episode and I have, sorry, it's a Q&A episode and I have three questions I want to dive into. But first, before I do that, I just want to go over a few ways you can help support the podcast. So first, if you're sick of just focusing on weight loss and instead want a body recomp, then my one-on-one online coaching program is for you. I help you lose body fat and build muscle with my body recomp training, nutrition, and lifestyle methods. We look at things like your lifestyle and biofeedback to individualize your training and nutrition program to you and your specific needs. There's also at least one to two bottlenecks that we figure out outside of the training and nutrition protocol that we figure out that are keeping you from seeing the results that you want to see. And this typically holds people back more than they think. So if you're interested in learning more, the link is in the show notes, or you can reach out to me on Instagram and we can chat about this in more detail. Next, if you aren't interested in full coaching, I do one-on-one consultations where we troubleshoot any issues you have and or map out a game plan for the next couple months. Again, the link to that is in the show notes. If you do want to learn more about a body recomp, I have my masterclass on body recomp, what it is, how to do it. And you can find the link to that in the show notes. And this is completely free when I just go over my methods around a body recomp. Next, if you don't yet, make sure you follow me on Instagram. O-E-H-N underscore, and that's where I'm most active on social media. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on there. And then lastly, if you found this podcast to be helpful in any way, if you could leave a rating and review, and that will help more people find this podcast. So with that out of the way, let's dive into today's question. So the first question I have is options if I gained too much during a build, but want to continue. This is pretty common, right? It's, hey, you're out of a fat loss phase. It's easy to let things go. And next thing you maybe gain a little bit more weight than you want it. Maybe you have a little bit more body fat than you want it. So it's okay. Where do I go from here? Do I cut? Do I run a mini cut? Do I just keep going? I mean, I want to dive into those. And I think this can help give you a nice little frame to, to, to work with in terms of, hey, here's where I need to go. So I bring this up because I've been there. I've overshot my weight in a building phase. I put on too much weight. I probably did it too quickly. I had my first build years ago, back when I was in college, I just put on too much weight. I just force fed really. And my thought at that time was, Hey, higher body weight means more muscle, but that's not the case. Right. Again, unfortunately you can't really trick the body into building muscle quicker. You just have to be patient with it. And then I also had a building phase a couple of years ago where I probably went a little too high with it. Again, both were helpful from a muscle building standpoint. However, I probably, probably could have gotten away with not letting my body weight come up as high. So again, just want to give you my insights onto it and into that today. Again, what happens most of the time when this happens, right? Whether somebody puts on in a short period of time, a couple pounds or, oh, hey, I need to go back to a fat loss phase. Or again, if it's been a couple uh, you know, months, it's like, oh, hey, I need to go back to a fat loss phase. But I feel like you end up getting into this endless cycle of gaining too much weight due to poor adherence or just thinking that you're out of a fat loss phase so you can just wing it. A lot of times it's, hey, I'm not in a fat loss phase, so I'm just going to eat anything I want. I'm not going to have any structure. And then somebody ends up not really adhering to their nutrition plan. So they gain too much weight and then they just go back to a fat loss phase. Again, probably not a great idea. Again, then they go back to cutting to quote unquote, clean things up and then rinse and repeat. And then you end up with the same look year after year, maybe a little worse, maybe a little better and little to no muscle being built in that process. So again, we want to try to get out of that cycle of, oh, hey, I I'm done with the fat loss phase. Now I'm not going to be as structured or on top of my nutrition, or uh, I'm just going to make, I'm I'm not going to worry about my food choices because I'm gaining, right? And then you end up gaining too much body fat, gaining too much weight. And then it's this vicious cycle of you're always trying to go back to to a fat loss phase, right? And again, you don't give yourself enough time to build muscle and you're just adding um, unnecessary body fat in there in that process. So I want to dive into what would be better options for you. So option one would be, so again, say you've gained a little bit too much weight, maybe a little bit too much body fat in your building phase. Option one would be improve adherence moving forward. Again, you don't have to go to a fat loss phase. You don't have to make any adjustments, just improve your adherence. If you're, look, if maybe you're somebody who you weren't tracking calories, hey, maybe you start tracking your calories a little bit more. Maybe you follow your meal plan a little bit better. Maybe you just make better food choices overall. But again, improving your adherence is going to be on this, right? So if you've been building for less than like 12 to 16 weeks, then this is especially true for you. So if you're at that three to four month mark and you're Adherence hasn't been great. I would improve adherence first before I decide to go back to a fat loss phase. Again, you might have a little more body fat than you want currently, but if you go right back to cutting, then you'll ruin the momentum aspect that you need to build muscle. And like I said, you need it, it takes time and it takes time to build muscle, right? So if you're just always going back to a fat loss phase, you are going to shoot yourself in the foot. You can always fat loss diet later. So here again, just improve your adherence, whatever that is, what's going to be different from everybody. What I would typically do in this situation is run an energy audit. So we would look at, can we, is your, has your movement fallen? Are you not tracking certain things? Again, is your consistency of tracking down your consistency of the nutrition plan down? Are you adding in more snacking, grazing? Are you 
you not weighing out your foods? Are you adding in a lot of condiments, butters, oils, stuff like that? So we would check those things out and see where they could improve there. And then that would be our course of action before being like, oh, hey, let's go back to a fat loss phase. So again, just improving your adherence moving forward is key. Option two, go closer to maintenance for the rest of your building phase. And this kind of goes hand in hand with improving your adherence, but instead of going back into a deficit, just get closer to your maintenance level calories for the rest of your building phase, right? And again, that what that's going to do is it's going to make sure you're not in a deficit, which we know isn't great for building muscle, but it is still going to keep you at maintenance, which is going to put you in at least a decent position to build muscle and you're not, and, and, and it will limit fat gain, right? And so you would go back to that uh, for the rest of your building phase. This way you'll have enough energy to crush and recover from training, but you'll be limiting fat gain. So again, you can always just go back to your maintenance calories versus trying to shoot for a surplus. Because And, and another reason would be if you did gain weight, gain some body fat, you know, you have a little bit of extra energy on your body that your body can utilize for whatever it needs to. So you have a little bit more flexibility there. You don't necessarily have to be in this large surplus, right? So again, I think the, now I think I know the more body fat you have, the more likely you can be closer to maintenance and still build muscle. Whereas the leaner you are, the less likely that is to happen there. Option three, you just keep going. I wouldn't recommend this one, but you might be gaining more weight than you want, but you can be sure you're building muscle in this process. So Yes, you're gaining weight quickly, but if your weight training's there, you're eating enough protein, you're sleeping well, like you are still going to be building muscle, right? You might just be accumulating a little bit of extra body fat. So that would be the downside to this approach is that you'll just have more body fat that you need to lose later, which is definitely a downside. You are putting your body in a good position to build muscle here. Um, again, just with a little bit of extra body fat. So you could just keep going with it, but again, that's going to, you're going to have to pay that back later. You're going to have to be in a deficit for a little bit longer to get to the body fat levels that you want to be at. But if you're okay with not being as lean, this could be a potential option for you, especially if you're somebody who's always struggled with being too lean or again, not having enough muscle or having trouble building muscle or, or always just trying to fat loss diet. This might be the thing you need to help your body really push through and get muscle. Again, option three would be to just keep going. Option four would be to mini cut. If you've been building for more than like 12 to 16 weeks, then a mini cut could be an option for you. But realize that the main goal of this is to increase hunger levels following the mini cut and give you more runway to gain weight after. So you do want to use this with caution and you can't overdo many cuts. So again, the mini cut would be two to six weeks where you just get into a deficit and you get in and get out, cut off some body fat that has the goal of increasing your hunger and also giving you more runway to continue on your building phase. But like I said, we can overdo this. This isn't something that you want to rely on multiple times. You probably have one, maybe two many cuts in your back pocket in a six to 12 month span of building, right? Anything more than that. And you're abusing the mini cut there with that. And we go back to now you're just, oh, you're, you're fat loss dieting too much. And that's not going to be great from a muscle building perspective, but a mini cut is a potential option for you in this situation, but you do want to use this with caution. Okay. It's, it, it can be tempting to overdo it, but also even within it, you still want to make sure protein's in a good spot. You want to make sure your um, deficit is large, but not too large either. Um, and you're still feeling up on good foods uh, there with that. And then obviously that period of time afterwards can always be a challenge um, as well too. But again, a lot of times what I typically would use, I really don't use many cuts anymore, but if I, what I did typically use them for was again, to clean things up, to get hunger back. Cause if you're pushing calories for a, a period of time, you do start to see hunger dwindle down a little bit and it's tough to get in the, the amount of calories that you need to. So that obviously increases your hunger. So you can have, you're more likely to eat the amount of calories that you need to. Again, if you're doing this because you put on too much body fat, because your adherence was poor, that's probably not the right use for it, but it is potentially an option for you. If you really want to, if you really just did if you were just like, you know what, I really did screw up in my initial part of my building phase. I want to be better. I want to stick to this building phase for an extended period of time, but I do need to get a little bit of weight off first. I think this can be a, a solid option for you, um, but I would do this with a coach under su supervision of a coach versus by yourself. Option five, in the building phase and go to a regular fat loss phase. Again, I would save this for somebody who's been building for more than about 20 to 30 weeks. Again, if you're just to the point to where now you've, you feel like you've gained too much body fat and you've been doing this for at least 20 to 30 weeks or longer, then it's probably time to just end the building phase and go to a, a fat loss phase. You've probably, the building phase probably ran its course and it's time to go back. Again, the kind of big takeaway here is you just don't want to overdo the, the fat loss phases right there with that. Just a few closing remarks, gaining a little extra weight in a building phase is far from the worst thing in the world and may actually be what you need long-term. So, you know, be careful with just because you gain a little bit extra body fat, it, again, it may not be the worst thing in the world. Uh, I initially had talked about my building phases where maybe I force fed and, and, and gained too much weight. And then I did that again, but 
they did help me build muscle at the end of the day. Again, whether it was done in the most optimal way, it did help me build muscle. And that initial bulk where I really pushed weight and I was just trying to see my weight go up as high as it could. I think had I not done that, I probably would have never fueled myself enough for training. I always would have tried to stay a little bit leaner. So it didn't help me break through that plateau. But again, so long as you've lifted in the process, you will have gained some muscle in the process. Keep that in mind, right? As long as you're lifting in that, if you're gaining some weight, again, it's not anything crazy and you're weight training in the process, like some of that is going to be muscle. And I always tell clients, your first building phase isn't going to be your best. So take what you learn from it and then apply it to your next building phase to make it even better. Then again, this is much better than ending up in this endless too much weight gain. And then right back to fat loss cycle that you, that I've been talking about throughout. So again, even if you gain a little bit more weight than you want it, that's fine. Hey, it's your first building phase, first, second building phase, take some lessons from it, see what you can apply the next time and then get better. Right. I think that's the best thing you can do. It comes down to, Hey, we have these options for what you can do, but also understand that gaining a little bit of extra weight in a, in a building phase isn't the worst thing in the world there on that. All right. So that question is done. Hopefully that was helpful there on that. Next is, do you think there's a limit to how many sets you should do for one single exercise? And I do. And I think to sum this up, it's whatever leads to unproductive sets. So whether that be from fatigue or mentally, you are just tired of executing that particular exercise. So again, you could be, if you do an exercise and you're fatigued and you've done five to six of them, and now it's, you're not getting, you're just not getting quality reps in quality sets in, then that's too many sets for that exercise for that one single exercise or Again, you get on the fifth and sixth set and you're just like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to put again. And that's too many there on that. So it's not like it's this hard set number of, Hey, this many sets is too many. It's ultimately comes down to what's not productive. You could do 10 sets. You could do what they call German volume training, where you do 10 by 10. And if you still have good quality sets by that 10th set, then that's not too many. Right. But some people might be like, dude, I, there's no way I could do 10 sets of one exercise. I personally wouldn't be able to do that. I think sets five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 would not be very productive. But if I was like, oh, if I had in my mind, oh, this is once I get to this number, it's not productive anymore, then you're shooting yourself in, in, in the foot there with that. But I will say that this probably happens around four to six sets per exercise for most people. Again, thinking about doing seven to eight sets of one particular exercise just sounds awful. And again, I just find that anything more than four to six, it's like, hey, we probably now need to go to another exercise here with this. So again, I don't think there's a hard number. I think it's very individual. And again, in terms of the sets, it's just what starts to become unproductive. And again, this can be from a physical standpoint, but also a mental standpoint there on that. So I thought this was a good question. And again, hopefully that gives you a framework to think about, you know, how many sets you'd want to do per exercise, right? Because again, like I said, I've done German volume training in the past where it was like 10 by 10. And it was like, oh, this is like, the best way to build muscle or whatever it is. And again, we think 10 by 10, is there anything special by that? And no, the only thing that's special with it is it's pretty high volume. So if you can hammer out good, 10 good quality sets with 10 reps, you're probably going to build some muscle uh, in that process. And if you can do that regularly, that will add some muscle over time. It's just going to be really hard to stick with to, to actually do all 10 sets and for all 10 of those sets to be like high quality as, as well too. So again, hopefully that was um, helpful there. And then lastly, we have thoughts on using a meal service, like a meal prep service, basically, again, any of them. And, and I think there, is this something that, that you can make work? I think that's what they were asking. And if they help you hit your overall calorie and macro goals and you are fine with the expense, then I think these are, are great options to add in if you need them. So again, as long as they fit within what you're trying to hit from an energy standpoint, it hits the macros that you need to hit for your goal. I think they can be a great substitution. They're not going to be magic. They're just a way to save time and, and and get help you hit your goals that you need to hit from a nutrition perspective. A client did talk to me about this recently, and I and he's a newer client. And I told him, I think it's great, but I do want you to rely on making your own meals, making your own choices at least one to two times per day. And the biggest thing is just so that way he can have that education around like what he needs to eat, right? Because if we just have him rely on just these meal prep services, he gets that association of oh, in order for me to you know make progress, I need to. It's the meal prep service that is is the key, but really it was the portion control, the macros and sticking to that was the thing that helped. And so I think it can be helpful to rely on them and help them supplement things, but also making sure you make choices too, because that's ultimately what's going to lead to long-term results, right? Because then it's, if you rely on a meal prep service for all your meals and you don't really pay attention to what's in the meals or why this is doing what it's doing, then once you're done with the meal prep service, then what? And so I think it can be important to to really make sure that you're also still getting that education and, and figuring and coming up with your own meal. So that way you have that skill and you can use that when, Hey, you know what, maybe it's a cost thing where it's not going to be worth it to me anymore to 
keep spending money on this uh, meal prep. Maybe I have more time to do my own meal prep now, or Hey, I just, I don't, I can't rely on this meal prep service for the next couple of weeks. Cause I have something going on. So I think developing that skill is super key. That leads me to my last point. I mentioned this initially, but the expense, the expense aspect of it. Again, if it's something that's not cost effective for you, you obviously need to weigh that in. And that's how we would determine any like supplement or anything like that. Again, if you can justify the money and spending it and it helps take some stress off of food, I think it can be a great supplement, but I would be careful to just rely on them fully unless you have already developed that skill of nutrition, right? But I do think there needs to be some sort of learning and trial by air type, type thing with nutrition. So again, to sum it up, if you use a meal prep service, I think that's perfect. That's going to help you out. It's definitely going to help with portion control and most likely a good balance of macros and just a good balance of food in general. But again, I would also urge you to come up with your own meals and and, and whatnot. So that way you can really learn the skill of nutrition and, and have a good idea of, of what to do whenever you're in a situation where you don't have access um, to this. So hopefully that was helpful. That is it for today's episode. And I will chat with you guys next time. 